Um, so hi friends, um, this is Mobolaji again and um, thank you for joining me for this live session. Uh, I actually appreciate the fact that you have uh, stayed up and um, I know some of you have been really watching your time, waiting for the time to start and here it is, we are starting the live stream and um, once again thank you for joining. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is a um, common mistake that some applicants make that you or you could make or something that I've seen from my experience of, of doing this of um, that I've seen okay these are the kind of mistakes that you could make or something that you could get confused about in the, in the process of applying for master's in Sweden and the Swedish Institute study scholarship and um, so this session is supposed to um, show you that those kind of things that could be um, that could you know come up as mistakes for you that you should avoid um, i actually don't plan for this live session to be so long um, so i just hope you um, gain a lot from it so, um, this is the agenda for this session today um, you know, we're going to do a recap of uh, last live stream session, um, last live stream session, which was uh, a few days ago, and then the second one is going to be the second uh, thing we're going to be doing is about we're going to be talking about common mistakes made during admissions application, and um, the last thing we're going to talk about is a, a common mistakes made during S, uh, SISS application. And for for some of us who don't know what SISS stands for. SISS means um, stands for the Swedish Institute Study Scholarship. Now that's the scholarship, the full scholarship with all the monthly allowances and the full tuition fees and the travel grant from your country. That's scholarship I'm talking about. And I want you to know that this SISS application is actually very different from um, the admissions application for masters in Sweden. Uh, they are handled by different two different organizations. Um, so we are talking about two different sets of documents required for both of these applications. So you need to take note of that so you don't mix the two of them together. The reference letter that you need for, for example, the reference letter you need for the SISS application is not the same you need for admissions application. They are entirely different. The motivation letter you need for your SIS scholarship application when is not the same with what you will need for um, admissions application so, so as i said the first thing we're going to be talking about is like a recap of our last last live live stream session and uh, you know in our last uh, last last session we talked about um, some pretty important um, issues concerning the applications that are going to be starting in Oct on october 16 as a master's application and the number one thing that I talked about is about the fact that there are, there are two of about the two most important websites for master's application in Sweden and um, and the scholarship application as I said talking about university admissions which is the organization that organizes that handles all uh, master's applications in Sweden I mean in Sweden, you don't send your applications to different universities. All your applications are handled by the university admission, which is an, the name of an organization. It's a, in Sweden, it's a unified um, application uh, process. Every university, you submit your documents to university admissions, and every university can access um, your application documents on the on the on the portal so what you do is you create a an account on the university admissions website um, and then you you select like a maximum of four master's programs whether in the same university or different universities maximum of four and then you you have to submit upload your documents and there are some that some documents that have to be sent directly by your university make sure you attend to that also um, so just upload your documents and um, all the universities that you selected, we have access to your documents from university admissions portal. 
So, and the second website that I talked about in the last session is the Swedish Institute of Study Scholarship website, which is what we are the main subject of our discussions all through this period because without um, a scholarship, you a full scholarship in terms of monthly allowances, you can't study in Sweden. You know, Sweden, studying in Sweden for masters is you have to pay tuition fees. But you know, the Swedish Institute Scholarship, if you win it, will pay for your tuition fees, will pay for your monthly expenses. You know, so it's it's very important. We are going to be talking about master's admission, master's admission, and then the scholarship, which is also very crucial. And so the, the, the second thing that we, we discussed in the last session is about visiting each university's website. Because it's very important. You're going to be selecting universities on the university admissions website. So you need to know what each university requires for um, the different master's programs that you apply to. You know, you have to know what they require. You have to know there are some universities that require motivation letters. Not all universities ask for motivation letters. There are some that ask for reference letters. There are some that ask for, you know, they call it statement, statement of purpose, um, a study plan, you know, all those kind of things. Not all universities ask for that. So you need to be sure what is required for the master's program you're interested in by the university that's going to be offering them. So that's why it's very important that you visit the university's website, apart from the two most important websites. And um, the third thing that we talked about, and I talked about, was um, the list of eligible master's programs for next master's application will be published by December 1, 2018. And I say that because usually for the Swedish Institute Study Scholarship application, every year there's usually a list of um, master's application, eligible master's programs um, for the scholarship. So you have to, if you are going to be applying for the scholarship, you have to select one of the master's programs that, yeah, that's in the list in order for you to be eligible for the scholarship, you know. Um, so, and it's not all, the, the fact is, it's not all master's programs in Sweden that are eligible for the scholarship, for the Swedish study scholarship. There's usually a list of eligible master's programs. So, um, and the list for the next master's app for the next scholarship application, the list of eligible master's courses, master's programs, the Swedish Institute said they will publish it on December 1, 2018. And I've got some questions from a number of my, you know, number of my students who are quite concerned because since our master's application starts on October 1, I mean October 16, um, so does that mean they have to wait till December 1 to know which master's programs to apply for? And the fact is, you don't have to wait. Well, you can wait if you don't want to take chances, but you don't have to wait. You can check. Um, this is what I did because it was like this when I was applying. This is what I did. Um, I actually looked at um, the list of um, eligible master's programs for previous years before mine. And um, I looked for, I discovered that the master's programs that I was interested in were, were in those lists, previous lists, like all of them were in previous lists. So I, I felt comfortable because, okay, that means yeah, there's a high probability that the master's programs I'm going to be selecting will be on the list that would be, that was, um, that would be um, published in December of that year. So, and pretty much, and, you know, Luckily for me also, fortunately for me, when the list was released, all the courses, I, all the master's programs that I applied for were, that I selected were on that list. So you can do that. And if um, per venture, when the list comes out, um, the master's program you select is not on that, um, is not on the list. You can go to your applications on the university admissions website and delete your um, one of the courses or any of the courses that's not on the list. Actually, yeah, you can delete any course that you feel you are no more interested in and add another one. And um, usually you can do this from October to January, the deadline of the master's application. You can add and delete as many times as possible anytime, anytime between October and January on their admissions website. So you can actually you know, edit your application. Um, during the master's application period. 
So now let's go into uh, the reason why we are here today. Um, okay, I'll start with this famous quote that is uh, attributed to um, this popular scientist, mathematician, Sir, Sir Isaac Newton. You know, he's reported to have said that if I have, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants, you know. And basically what he's talking about is experience, you know. This is how you avoid mistakes in the future. Instead of, you know, uh, making the mistakes that these giants and quotes have made in the past, you learn from them by, by then teaching you that, okay, these, these are the kind of mistakes that you can make. This is what I experienced, so avoid this when you get there. So that is what I'm doing. Even though I don't consider myself a giant, but of course you get my you get what the point of the, the you get the point I'm trying to pass across that that uh, I've been through this process before. I've um, shown people other people how this process before. So I think I believe I have the experience that you can can learn from. So we're going to talk about um, you know common mistakes made during um, admissions application. Um, but before I continue, let me confirm if um, we are really getting what I'm saying. Let me check. Feed. Um, so as I said, okay. Now, for ex um, let me say that this session is going to be recorded, so you can have access to it later. So you don't need to be worried about that. And um, how to get the the list of eligible courses for for the previous applications? I I think I should be able to upload that in a group um, list of uh, eligible master's programs for the previous years. I think I. I'll be able to do that. Okay, so let's continue with our session. Common mistakes made during masters, during admissions application. You know, the I listed a, 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 some things. I, I listed about one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to talk about them in detail. Number one is insufficient proof of English proficiency. Uh, number two is waiting till the last day to pay your application fee. Number three is academic documents. Example, your transcripts not appropriately submitted. And then number four is not meeting each university's uh, specific requirements. And number five is scanned documents not, not clear. So, points um, in detail. Number one, insufficient proof of English proficiency. Now we are talking about common mistakes that are made, that could be made during admissions application number one insufficient proof of english proficiency now for master's admissions in Sweden. now let me take you to the university admissions website to show you what we're talking about um let's see um this website english language requirements now Okay, I'm just going through what is on this page. In order to be eligible for university studies in Sweden, a student must demonstrate that they meet the English requirements for the course or program. Because master's programs in Sweden are taught in English, so, so you have to be able to understand, speak, write in English, you know, for you to attend a master's program in Sweden. So they'll say, what is the requirement? So we are concerned about master's level. For most master's level courses and programs, the requirement is also the equivalent of English 6, English course B, though some may require a lower or higher level of English. Now, this is the requirement for master's programs in Sweden, the level of English language you need to have. So, how do you prove this? So, they provided guidelines on how 
meet the English language requirements. You can you meet the English language requirements through certain secondary high school studies, certain university studies, or an internationally approved English test. So you have these three choices to uh, meet um, the English language requirements. So most usually there are, there are actually three options here, but you know usually you have the option of a test or university studies. That means if you study, if your master's program was taught in English in for certain countries or some universities, then you can be um, said to have met the English language requirement, either university studies in certain countries or by in or by an English test. So if if you meet if your country the country you studied in is on is one of those countries where you that is considered to be okay for English uh, language requirement, then psh, you are fine. You don't need to write any test. You don't need to write I um IELTS or TOEFL. So um let's see for university studies. Previous university studies study that the university may university level English language requirement of a course or program they've applied to. Uh, a lot there's a lot of information here. But there are some countries now countries students with a three year bachelor's degree from the following countries meet the English requirement. Three years some of you some of um you went for my bachelor's programs that um, lasted for maybe four years, five years, still the same thing. So far you had a bachelor's degree that is at least, there was at least for three years from Botswana, Asia, uh, Ethiopia, the Gambia, Ghana, Kenya, Lesotho, Liberia, Malawi, Namibia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Swaziland, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. If you are from any of these African countries, um, you studied for you study. You no, know, there's a difference between studying and being a citizen of these countries. What he's talking about is if you studied in any of these African countries that I mentioned, then you are, you know, classified as, as um, you know, that you've already met the English language requirement and you don't need to write an English test. You know, so you are okay. Uh, what about other countries? I think um, um, the you know there are some other countries. Um, so if you want to be sure, how do you know if you meet the English language requirement based on the country you studied in? Search for your country here, let's say Angola, search for Angola, um, for special instructions on my country or study in Angola, then you see that, okay, wh whether you meet English language requirements or not. For people from Angola, um, um, saying uh studies completed in this country do not meet English requirement for studies in Sweden. So so it's very important. I think I've showed you um something about English language requirements, you know, that you know you are meeting or proving your English language proficiency skills for master's admission either by high school studies, university studies, or English proficiency. And for master's programs, what you are concerned about is either university studies or English proficiency test. High school, is, high school studies is for those that are interested in applying, applying for bachelor's degree programs in Sweden. But if you're applying for master's programs, then we are talking about either you meet it, you meet the English language proficiency, um, requirements by university studies or by the form of an English test. Okay, so let's go to wait until the last day to pay your application fee. That's another mistake that some people may make because you know there are actually two ways of paying your um, application fee. Number one, if you are from if you are from outside the outside Europe, outside um, the EU. You are required to pay an application fee of 900 Swedish crowns 
and you can check the conversion to your local currency at this website xc.com so and it must be paid on or before the deadline and the deadline is usually in january for the autumn admission uh, period so you have to pay the application fee on or before but you know you, you don't have to you, you shouldn't take chances by waiting till the last day to pay your application fee pay it early before um, the deadline and you know for you can either pay through your with your bank atm card or through direct bank transfer and the issue is the better the better way the better the faster way to pay your application fee is through your bank card you know i paid with my bank card when i was applying and you know i paid on the same day applications opened i remember october 17 2016 that's was when um, applications opened when i was applying at that same day that i paid the application fee i think i might have been the first person to pay um for that application period because i wanted this thing i i prepared myself i wanted i didn't want to take any chances so i just paid the application fee on the same day applications open you know and you no know, the sad th uh, this um uh the sad thing is though that the application fee is non-refundable you know that's the sad thing but you know it's they have to they have to um it, it's a fee for them going through your applications and analyzing it and assessing your application so you have to pay them for doing that and that's what the application fee is for so and then that if you want to pay by direct bank transfer you have to know that it can take up to maybe a week or more to pay for your for your um, bank transfer to be received by university admissions in sweden so if you pay today by joint transfer it could take a week or more for them to receive it in sweden so don't take chances pay your application fee early is your academic documents example transcripts not appropriately submitted you know I've, you know, I'm, I'm particularly, um, let me see, uh, like I, I especially, I'm, I, I especially emphasize on special instructions for your countries because it's very important. It's something that you, some applicants might miss because when you go to the universal admissions website, we are just concerned about what do they need me, what do they need from me, what documents do I need to submit, and we check the requirements and you forget about it but you know there are special instructions for your country and you need to be sure what instructions they are for your countries sometimes they have instructions concerning how your transcripts should be submitted sometimes they have instructions for how your whether you meet your english language requirements so you need to be you need to check these special instructions for search for your countries so how do you check it let me show you from the investor admission website. Uh, okay. The university, let me show you. Enter investadmissions.sc. This is what you see. So, how do you check special instructions for your country? You know what you do? Click on find out more. Then you have this, you have different kind of links and everything. Go to um, this link. Let's say document your ability for studies. Click on that link. Then you mass instructions for masters applicants. Click on it. Then you, you look at this left you know, and you see next steps. Step one, find out submit. Two, checking for special instructions. Special instructions for my country of study. So that's what we are looking for. Click on it. And you see a list of countries different countries all over the world i mean name it your country should be here i don't know there's there are different kinds of countries you know even some of them i i don't think some of them are so you know like holland was head of before you know and then you see different countries so make sure your country is here so just click on any of the links see what information applies to your country if i find it difficult to locate this link, you can also just go to search here search type the name of the country you 
see a list of um, links relating to Ghana. And the first thing it talks about checking for special instructions for my country of study, Ghana. So you just click on that. And then you are going to be paid for Ghana. And you, you have to you have to know about the pages and instructions for your country, the country where you studied. Alright, so let's continue. each university specific requirements now it's very important that you visit the websites of the universities you are interested in applying to to know what they want you to apply for now for on the uh, now let me show you in the university admissions website you'll find um, let me see what I need to submit now, finding out what I need to submit, submit here, you will see the list of documents that you need to submit for master's applications in Sweden. Generally, for all master's programs. I mean, all master, if you are applying for any master's program in Sweden, you have to submit all of these documents that are you know, mentioned in the certificates, transcripts, proof of English skills, which some of us don't need if you, if you studied in certain countries. You need specific country requirements, which is up now and um, your process. Now, proof that you meet the specific entry requirements. The university's website will have the information regarding the specific entry requirements for the course you have applied to. Be sure to check for this. So, that is what even university admissions is advising. So, for example, you have, if you're interested in applying to Chalmers, to Chalmers website, Chalmers University. Chalmers University of Technology. Go to their website. You look for um, uh, let me see, master studies. Um, let me see, master's programs A to Z. So you find a list of master's programs from Chalmers University here. So let's say you're interested in biotechnology. Biotechnology. You see all the kind of information you need for applying for biotechnology at Chalmers. Find information entry requirements, um, specific entry requirements. They are talking about your degree, talking about mathematics, uh, mathematics. You know, early when you go to each this, this, this website, you find information on English proficiency, and that's because there are students from all over the world applying. So, on university admissions, if you study in certain countries, like you know. Ghana, Nigeria, Namibia, Kenya, um, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Uganda. Um, you know, if you study in any of these certain countries, you already meet the English language requirements. So you don't need to bother about English proficiency requirement of each university. But if you don't have, your country is not in any of these lists, you have to write EOT or so. Um, there are different requirements, you know. And then there are some master's programs that require you to submit uh, motivation letters. Now, let's see. Uh, let me see. Required documents for application for master's in Chalmers. So, for Chalmers, these are the documents they require from you. It's you know, relevant pages of your passport, CV, the CV, which is important. Project portfolio if you are applying to architecture and urban design, you know, motivation, have the requirements of CV, project portfolio, letter of intent motivation, you know. So you have to visit, it's very important you visit the website of the university you are interested in. So, um, continue. Documents not clear. Very important. Scanned copies should be very clear with all your text, signatures, seals, and stamps legible. Otherwise, if the scanned copies, usually when you are applying for master's in Sweden, scan copies of your you you can scan your documents, especially your certificates, your CV, your reference letters, you know, some other documents that you need to you know upload. And the important thing is, if any of the text, signature, seal, or stamp is not clear on these card colored copies, don't do it. Don't send it. 
all you can do is just make photocopies of this original document and you know get them certified and um, and send those certified copies by post or courier so how do you certify photocopies of your documents if you want to send by post or courier now the university admissions website gives clear instructions on what to do in that case now, let's go to where the all that documents are officially issued the documents to be accepted important that they are official before they are scanned into a pdf file or uploading or are copied and submitted via regular post so that's if you are scanning then for reason you are not able to scan and upload your documents you can of course send them to university admissions using the regular postal service or delivery service now for your university documents to certify document copies the original and copy the document to the person carrying out the certification in other words in your country you need to take the original and the photocopy of your documents to the person that wants to certify them you know you don't have to you don't need to send the original of your documents you are not getting your document back so you are not sending she didn't send the original document just send copies to sweden now each copy and page must be certified separately and clearly indicate signature of the certifying officer of the institution for notary public the name and address of the registration number of the certifying officer this must be printed legibly you no know, there are clearly laid out instructions on how even how this said this, this photocopies of documents should be certified and you can find that information here you need to this page and be sure and study everything very well of what the requirement concerning certifying your documents to the next slide now of course if you upload some documents you can you don't need to send them by post again or if you send some documents by courier or post you need to upload it and scan on your application port portal again you know either way you can scan do some documents and send some others by post you know it's a choice so i'm talking about the common mistakes that can be made during SISS application that is a scholarship application waiting till the last day to submit application now let me say this the scholarship application from previous years has really been very short like usually it starts on maybe the first or second day of February and it ends in 10 or 11 days I mean maybe first of February to the 11th 10th or 12th you know of February like maximum of 12 13 days for the scholarship application so that means there will be a lot of um you know or let me say a lot of activity on the scholarship website what that means is a lot of activity a lot of um, the, their website could be overwhelmed at close to the deadline so you, sometimes people have made mistakes where they couldn't submit the application because the website was hanging was you know was uh, loading at the at the end I've, I've heard about applicants who had this issue so you shouldn't wait the last period last day or second to the last day to, or last hour to submit to application i submitted my application when was it um, i think it was in the second or third day that i submitted submitted my scholarship application you sh shouldn't take any chances don't wait till the last day of course all the documents you need the templates usually there are templates that the Swedish Institute will provide for you all the templates will have been provided way weeks before the scholarship application starts usually the reference letter is, is the one usually you know published first the reference letter templates and the other ones the motivation letter templates are published later so you need to have your documents ready at the go so that by the time application starts on maybe on the first day all your documents should be ready to be submitted that's 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 the let me say that's your let me let me advise you and say that should be your battle plan your strategy 
for the scholarship application. All your documents should be signed, stamped by your referees. Whoever wants to sign for you, let them do it. You know, be on them. You know, to be able to give you these documents on time. You know, before the scholarship application starts. And number two is not following your reference letter instruction. Um, there are very strict instructions for reference letters for um, you know the scholarship. Now let me show you an example from previous applications. Um, okay. Okay. This is a reference letter from. So I want to show you kind of instructions that you could have in the reference letter template. So it's opening. So why it's trying to open? Let me check in. It's, um, Yeah, exactly. Your, your degree from from any ST, any, any your degree is actually enough to prove that you you meet the English language requirements. You don't need um you don't need to submit any letter from your university to say again that oh your studies were taken in English. You don't need that. So far, you submitted your transcript, your certificate. It's all enough. And you know that was what I did when I was applying. My university didn't have to give me a letter to say, "Oh, he did his studies in English." They submitted the help. The my my university submitted my transcript. I submitted my certificates, um, my degree certificate, and all these are enough to prove that since you studied in this university in this country, you meet the English language requirements. So these are the kind of instructions you can get. Now this, I want to. Point with the fact that this is last application round. Um, efficiency study scholarship, closure to the application for Swedish Institute study scholarships for studies in Sweden or master's level for the academic year 2018 2019. So that was the last application period. The next application period that you will be applying for is the 2019 stroke 2020 academic session so that's what you are applying for and you have to know that new templates new document templates will be provided for you in the next application so you can use this document i'm showing you this template for your own application it's it won't be accepted so i just want to show you that these instructions have been in every um, um reference letter template that i've seen over the years and you have to get out the reference form instructions. You have to go through this. If you it, when the templates are published, you need to download it first and read through all the instructions carefully. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand what they are saying. There's a, there are instructions on how to submit different instructions. So, I was saying, not following the reference, le reference letter instruction could jeopardize your scholarship application. The same thing for um, CV instruction. Not following the CV instruction could also jeopardize your application. And also, there is a document called the Proof of Work Leadership Experience. If you don't follow these instructions, you could be, you know, jeopardizing your chances of coming to Sweden and, you know, studying with us. So, if you look at what I've been saying and you examine what I've been saying all through this while, all the while, it's instructions, instructions, instructions. I know some of us could be fond of, you know, when you want to write an exam in, when you were in university and uh, you, could, you wouldn't bother about, you know, going through the instructions and because you were so anxious to start writing an exam, 
could just skip the instructions and just start writing the exam and forget that oh you are to answer you are to answer this you are to answer these provide answers to this particular set of questions or you know that if so it's very important that you pay attention to instructions information that's what you need and all the information you need are available on the Swedish Institute of Study Scholarship website, the University Admissions website, and the websites of the universities you are interested in. All the information you need, they are there. You need to study them, all the instructions. It's very important. This is why I stress it. It's very important. It's very, very important. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And um, so we are close to the end of this session. And um, after this session, I will try and go through the comments and examine the questions that some of us have and try and answer them. Um, but first, I have a short quiz for you. It's just one question. And um, yeah, I want you to go to this website, www.menti.com. Then enter this code 921637 to and then after you answer this after you enter this code you see a question for you to answer. I just want to examine your level of understanding of you know what I've been saying all this while. So this is the website www.menti.com. Enter this code 921637. It's one six three seven. So this is a question. So I want to see how well you understand what I've been saying or as well. Which of these is not a required document for SISS application? So waiting for your answers. Okay, we have one person. Um, I'm expecting more answers. Okay, we have a second person. Expecting more answers. We have a third person. Okay. Fourth. The fifth, mm -hmm. okay. Keep your answers coming. I'm waiting. Um, seems people are no more responding to this. Okay, we have six percent. Okay, I'll wait for one more minute to have your responses. Okay, one more minute, one minute to go.
Here are the epitocine. A few seconds to go. All right, time up. So let me show the correct answer. The correct answer. Um, the correct answer is um, transcript. Which of these is not a required document for SIS's application? Transcripts. Transcripts are not required for the scholarship application. And I'm glad a lot of you, you know, understand and know that. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. So do need transcripts. The other CV, motivation letter and reference letter, they are required for SISS application. Transcripts are not required. So even because of this, some of my students have asked me, uh, oh, I finished with a second class lower grade. Do I have a chance with a scholarship? Uh, I finished with, you know, not so, not so good grade. And I would say that you have a chance with a scholarship even if, even if, you, if, you, if you finished with a second class lower grade. Because when you're applying for the scholarship, they don't check the transcripts. They don't check your grades. What they are concerned about is your work, your, your work experience, your leadership experience, your volunteering experience, you know, your activity in the society, your activity, your passion for development, you know, all those kind of you know, social skills and all. That's what they are concerned about because that's the goal of the scholarship. They want to provide people from these countries the opportunity to study and gain skills that will help them go back to their countries and, you know, improve their countries and develop their countries so they are not concerned about your grade and everything and for the master's admission you know i know folks who have gotten admitted with you know second class lower grades in sweden yeah so go for it even if you have a second class lower grade go for it so far you have good work and leadership experience apply for the scholarship so once again i Thank you for joining this session and I really appreciate you guys for staying up and watching this. And as I said, this session is recorded and will be to be made available in the group after the, after the session. So thank you very much guys. See you later.